I keep receiving comments that gold is going to be confiscated. I imagine that many of these comments are from trolls who want to scare people away from owning gold, but I think there are people out there who are honestly concerned based upon things that they have heard. So in this video I'm going to provide all of the reasons I don't think there is a concern of gold confiscation, at least in the US. Before I do, I wanted to call everyone's attention to one of the main sources of confiscation theories. I've heard it myself many times. I don't want to mention any companies by name, but one of the most notable ones has a name that rhymes with Patriot Braiding Group, and they have a daily radio show slash podcast that rhymes with Patriot Bruise Hour. They state emphatically that confiscation is a real danger in the future because it has happened in the United States in the 1930s. They also mention that the executive order that called in the gold in the 1933 uh, executive order specifically exempted religious artifacts and numismatic gold. Conveniently, Patriot says that pre-1933 coins will probably be exempted from any future confiscation. Why? Because many of these coins were held in Europe during the period of time when holding gold was illegal in the United States. These coins are now available for sale and are considered collectibles. Thus, the language of FDR's executive order implies they will be exempted from confiscation. Now, why do I say that this is convenient for them? In their podcast, they claim over and over again that their goal is to get people into legal, lawful, constitutional money at the lowest cost possible. Their focus is on almost uncirculated pre-1933 coins, and they say that they can sell them to people for close to spot. Today I saw that they were selling $20 liberties for $1,930 each by check. At first blush, this doesn't seem outrageous, considering Kitco is selling random date gold eagles for $1,869 each. That's more than a $60 difference. But to make matters worse, the pre-1933 coin contains only 30.08 grams of gold, whereas the gold eagle contains 31.1 grams of gold. Thus, the cost of gold in the Eagle is $1,867 per troy ounce, whereas the Liberty is $1,995 per troy ounce. This is a 7% difference in the cost of gold. If you're worried about confiscation of wealth, you should probably worry more about the collectible, collectible coin salesman confiscating your wealth than the government. Now, I'm singling out Patriot. But there are others who would like to steer people away from modern-day bullion coins also, using confiscation fears. One must always question financial motives behind messages. So, with that rant behind me, let me talk about the reasons why it is very unlikely that gold will be confiscated in the future. Let's start out with the biggest and most important one, the motive for confiscation. Why did FDR do what he did? The answer is that leading up to the early 1930s, gold backed the monetary system. Bank deposits were obligations of the depository institutions, and they could be de uh, demanded in specie, meaning gold. When confidence was lost in the banking system, people lined up around corners to be able to get into banks and withdraw the real capital that backed the system. Because banking was fractional reserve, the banks did not have the capital available to meet the demands of their depositors. They couldn't just print gold. The only option they had available was to close their doors. Today, we don't face the same problem. Bank deposits are not callable in gold. They are callable in Federal Reserve notes. Thus, cash is a bigger danger to the banks than gold is. In the extreme event that everyone starts withdrawing their cash from the banking system, the Federal Reserve can call upon the Treasury Department of Engraving and Printing to print up more. Similarly, leading up to the 1930s, debt typically had gold clauses allowing the debt to be callable in gold. This caused much of the debt at the time to be questionable in terms of quality in its ability to perform. FDR canceled all the gold clauses. Today, it would be very unusual to come across a bond that had a gold clause in it. Reason number two. There are a lot of very influential old money families who hold gold. I've known one in particular. Now, don't get me wrong. Gold isn't the only thing that they own. They own lots of real estate. They own lots of interest in businesses, oftentimes family businesses. They own corporate and municipal bonds. 
but they also own fine art, antiques, and gold. They have learned from an early age that these items don't have to be constantly generating an income. The families get plenty of income from other sources. But they do know that in the past, in times of crisis, it is the gold, the art, and the antiques that can keep a family fortune going. Legacy is very important to them. And guess what? These families influence who you and I are allowed to vote for. Nobody even gets to the primaries without being vetted. Well, maybe with one exception. Nobody gets very far without ample uh, campaign funds. If times get tough enough that gold has to be used to preserve the family wealth, they are going to make darn sure that it's not made illegal. For now, though, they are just as happy that gold is flying under the radar. The next reason is the opposite of gold being a threat. When the financial system gets into trouble this time around, gold will be the savior. It will be used to recapitalize the system. Know how I know? Take a look at government balance sheets around the world. When they refer to assets, what do they list? Sovereign bonds and currencies of other nations mostly, some national lands, and gold. No, not Bitcoin. Thought I'd just put that in there to head off a few comments that I always seem to get. In a global debt default situation, the bonds will be in jeopardy. And that's the thing about bonds. If payments can't be made, the bonds can become worthless pretty quickly. The reason payments will be difficult to make is that the balance of the bonds and the accompanying cash flow requirement is well above the productive capabilities of the borrowers. So how do we get out of this situation? Default. Plain and simple. But it won't be an explicit default. It will be a revaluation of the currency. Gold will be used to make that revaluation happen. All it takes is for the governments that hold gold to state that they will buy unlimited quantities at a price higher than it is now. Voila! Instant devaluation of the currency. Why not simply confiscate gold? Well, for one, you need the government's bid for gold to be there in order to cause the price to rise. Next, the government is the only uh, the government of the U.S. has been saying for years that it has 8,134 metric tons of gold. This is the largest gold stockpile advertised by any government. Why would they want to advertise such a large stockpile only to call the presence of the gold into question through an act of confiscation? It wouldn't make any sense. Lastly, in order to reintroduce gold as a powerful monetary item, you need the population to highly value it. You have to get the network effect into play. Never heard of the network effect? Think of it like this. Think about the telephone. Would anyone value the telephone if only one person had one and nobody has ever used one before? No, of course not. Well, it's the same with gold. The more people who own a little gold, the more useful it will be because it will inspire even more people to want gold. Again, voila, instant devaluation of the currency against gold. And the last reason I'll offer up as a reason against gold confiscation is the Gold Bullion Coin Act of 1985. You know, this is the coin act that authorized the Treasury to start minting gold eagle coins containing one troy ounce of fine gold. The U.S. Mint has been selling these coins to American citizens for 35 years. The government is not going to turn around and say, hey, you know all those coins that we sold you? We want them back. Nope, not going to happen. What's more interesting is that the language of the act uh, stated specifically that these gold coins will be considered numismatic items. So how about that? Here's a law that labels gold eagle coins numismatic collector items when the people who hawk the old coins state that they are immune from confiscation because they are collectible items. Is it possible that the coins other than gold eagles and buffaloes will be confiscated? I suppose it is possible. I think it's unlikely, though. Just the same, it's nice knowing that the language is in there. I happen to believe that very specific and deliberate language goes into the laws that are passed. Who knows? Maybe some old money families were influential in making sure that this language was in there. I don't know. It's just a fun little thought that I have in my head. So there you go. 
four reasons why I don't think confiscation is going to happen. And that's just my opinion, but I think my opinion is more reasoned out than a lot of the other arguments that I've heard. But feel free to discuss the issue in the comment section. That's what we're all here for. I keep receiving comments.